Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome and may the Lord bless you. Today I am working through prophecies for the nations here on the Master's Voice and the very first nation that the Lord told me to begin with is the nation of Canada. Now the prophecy that I am reading it is a two-part prophecy. One part of the prophecy was from 2014, and one part of the prophecy is from 2019. And the 2014 prophecy was very severe, and the 2019 prophecy was very encouraging. But before I go into both messages, the message that I have to deliver to Canada today from the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord said to say to Canada that you have failed to keep the commission of a Christian nation. You have failed to uphold the tenets of Christianity in your nation. The Lord kept saying, as I was preparing to make this message, that Canada is complicit with the beast system. He said, Celestial, this country has complied with the laws and the dictates of the coming one world order, the coming beast system, more rapidly than any other nation except Australia. They have failed and they have given over their freedoms to the beast. So one of the ways that you will know that you are living in a country that has really, really caught up and clicked into the coming one governance system is you will notice that there have been a ton of rapid fire laws, rapid fire societal changes in your country. A ton of the old laws have been abrogated. This means abruptly and suddenly pushed aside. Many countries experienced this because 2020, that year was used as an emergency year to trigger off what they have now revealed. Most of us have now found out is called the Great Reset. But that was the pinnacle point. I call it the crowning. Crowning is when you are pushing to deliver a baby and then you finally start to see the head. That was the crowning of the beast system. So if you have seen a lot of long-standing laws on the books abrogated, which means they've absolutely been done away with, or if you have seen them eroded, meaning they have eaten away at long established laws by establishing or creating emergency powers, emergency measures, side laws that make the original laws either less effective or in some cases completely paralyze those old laws, those old freedoms, those old civil liberties, those old bedrock cornerstones that a nation has always rested on. If you've seen a new crop of laws that have basically surrounded the old laws and attacked it until the old law is basically useless, yes, it's still on the books, but it doesn't operate then you know that your country has been clinched by the beast. And the Lord was saying that to the level that you see that society has changed because of these times and laws that have been changed, that is how far you know your country has been caught or is still being stalked and pounced by the beast system. So God said that Canada is complicit with the beast system, meaning that Canada has gone along with and complied with so much new world coming Revelation 13 legislation and Revelation 13 rules that the nation has almost been as if it's paralyzed with scorpion stings. And so God says, Canada, that you failed your commission to keep this nation solidly Christian, solidly God-backed, and therefore, of the two prophecies that I read, it is definitely the 2014 prophecy that will more apply to Canada instead of the 2019 one, which gave me so much joy and hope for that country. This prophecy is called A Word for Canada. The first part, June 25th, 2019. Canada is the bastion of the nations, is what the Lord started by saying. Now, a bastion is something that is very big. It is very sturdy. It is something that is large and fixed and can be depended on. On a football team, the quarterback is not the bastion. So he's the nimble, quick guy. He's not the bastion. The bastion are whatever the name of those bigger guys that jump on anyone, everyone else to give the quarterback a chance to move. I think they're called linebackers, but I am not sure. A bastion means a shelter and a bulwark. 
A shelter is something that offers safety from the elements. It keeps you safe. It keeps you from being exposed. A bulwark is a large, huge covering protrusion that shields you from harm. So the only thing I can think of is think of a terrible storm and a person happens to find a large overhanging cliff or the side of a mountain and then you take shelter under it. So if you look at the terminology that God was using to describe Canada, he was saying that Canada is large. Canada is sturdy. Canada is dependable. Canada is a sheltering place, a kind place, the kind of place that immigrants will come and quickly feel at home, the kind of place that can be depended on among the nations to offer a shelter to those who need it, a protection to those who come feeling oppressed, and a home that shelters and shields from harm. A bastion, in other words, is a very positive word. It is a word that is exemplary, meaning that it is a word that other people will point to and say, you see that? Why can't you be like your brother? It's that brother that makes everybody angry because the mother keeps pointing to him as the good example in the mixed. A bastion is something that upholds and defends uprightness and specific principles, it is also a last result, a last resort, meaning that when everybody else lets you down, this one, the bastion, will not let you down. It stands out, it excels, and it shines among others when you put them all in the lineup. Therefore, God was saying that Canada is large, excellent, a refuge, and that she stands out among the countries of the world. And this is what the Lord said in June of 2019. You have done well, Canada, very well. Long-term stability and peace can be found in you. You are a shelter to the weary, the weak, the lost, and the rejected. A nation of open doors, the Lord said. And I saw a vision of someone that was taking a pie to someone else's house and they just walked in without having to knock or buzz or be let in. And that because the door was unlocked. The visitor knew that the door was unlocked. And so he was bringing a hot pie from his wife that was wrapped in a checkered red and white cloth, which are Canada's colors. And when that man came over to the house with an unlocked door, he was received with much joy and hugging and jokes. The Lord said, Canada, you are a nation of families and homes, quietly serving God in peace. A nation of Quakers, a nation of Mounties, a nation of bravery, a nation without pride, very humble hearted and filled with brotherly love. And again, I saw another vision of someone hugging another person who had come into the home. And this time you could see that these two people were not related ethnically or by blood. It was a black foreigner who had come into Canada to settle and the Canadian received him as a brother. And God was showing me that these two men from totally different backgrounds were living together in Canada and they were bonded as if they were brothers. The Lord continued to say, Canada is a nation of peace, equality, and gentility for all in the genuine sense of the word. A nation I can rest my hand on if only they would let me. Continue to allow me in your midst, Canada, or I will come to you with a sword. I have this against you, Canada. You are beginning to value yourself above my word. You are capped in ice and snow. But the problem is that your heart is falling asleep under there. So God is basically telling Canada in 2019, your love is growing cold. He said, you are transforming my true gospel, which is the shining candle in your midst that made you great. Now, if I just pause here and we think of the entire hundreds of American prophecies that I have been bringing over the years, see how consistent God is. God isn't telling Canada that her hard work or her welcoming heart or the fact that she doesn't have wars and go around killing people all the time as happens here is what makes her great. The same thing he said to Mystery Babylon, the USA, is the same thing he tells Canada. My true gospel made you great. My true gospel is the candle in your midst that gave you peace. He said, you have no wars. You do not have famines or diseases. 
God is saying he has sustained Canada. As long as Canada kept the home fires burning for Jesus, the burning candle of the midst in her midst, which is the gospel, Jesus Christ, he made her great, kept her from wars, famine, diseases, or having her borders penetrated. God says, if you transform the gospel, you will perish. I see your hearts and I see how many of you are very fervent and faithful and just. You are burning like lights against the darkness and these ones will not be put out. Because of these fervent and faithful people in the midst of Canada, God says that he held back his hand from any judgment against Canada but now harm will come to your country for changes made to the gospel, the truth of God, and also the moral standards that Canada has always been known to represent and uphold. And so I see now in this vision, God was holding before me a scroll. And on that scroll, I was looking at some of the things that God says he is not happy that Canada was starting to do or is already doing. One sentence said, man with woman only. So this is one thing that is on a scroll that they were supposed to uphold, that man should only lie and be with a woman. Another one said, peace and brotherly love. A third sentence, a third word only said, forgiveness. These are some of the indictments God has against you, Canada. You are departing from the godly truths that you have always known, that you have built up your society on, man with woman only, to forgive when a wrong is done for you. You were known for peace. You were known for brotherly love, but God says that you are departing from all these godly things that you always knew and always defended. Now, this is very different because I'm here in a nation that when it sees good and evil, it will always defend evil. So America has endless tolerance for evil because America is under the judgment of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20 that says, Woe to those who call good evil and evil good, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. That kind of woe means that there is a particular type of punishment to a person who will see sin and say, I think we need to give sin a chance. I think we need to let sin stand up and explain why sin did this. And if sin seems sorry enough, I for one am ready to back sin up and say that we all sin like sin and sin needs a second chance and we should not judge. That is America's lifeblood to defend aberration, wickedness, and evil. But God is saying that that indictment was not against Canada until Canada began to also transgress against Isaiah 5, 20, and put light for darkness and darkness for light. God says that whoever does these things, and this is to you, Canada, he was saying in 2019, you will start to crumble if you do not repent of these things, because if I take my hand from on you, you will fall and you will become like your downtrodden and your salacious neighbor to the South. Canada, your salacious neighbor to the South is none other than the harlot of the revelation, mystery Babylon, the loose woman who agrees to anything and everything. God says that America is already destroyed from within and her nakedness will be seen from sea to shining sea. So this is definitely talking about spiritual nakedness and also the physical nakedness that will be overflowing here once the kind of sexual assault and other sexual judgments that have been spoken about many times Come to pass, God says, do not join her. Come out of Babylon's ideals and return to what you know. For this is what the Lord God says. If you let immorality exist among you and you don't challenge it, if you don't attack it and dig it up and remove it like the bitter tree roots that they are, I will begin to strike you with judgments at this time. You will feel them building up with force. And because of the believers crying out among you, so there are voices who are saying, this stuff should not happen. We should not be legalizing this. We should not be doing this, doing that. God says that because of these righteous ones who don't hold back to keep saying, if we do this, judgment will come. 
God says that when Canada is judged, Canada will know very well who is judging her and who is going to bring a slow destruction against her. He said that the believers in Canada who cling to his truth will be having dreams and visions. He said they will be seeing him in their dreams, warning them to pray harder for Canada unless the nation will fall. And God said that if these believers were not successful in their prayers to turn the tide of how Canada was going, then judgment would indeed fall. He said the bastion would fall because even bastions can fall and America will be the shining example of what it is when the biggest bastion on the football team goes down and breaks his neck and can never play again. The bastion will fall and everybody will see the underbelly of Canada that I, Jesus, he said, can see. Selah. And that means take a pause. In the Psalms, it's a musical rest. But what it really means is take a break at this point and think deeply and carefully about all you just heard. And now here is the word that I received in January 2014. January 2014 is when the Lord was bringing out a lot of judgment against these false pastors, false prophets, false teachers. I'm talking about the heavy hitters of Christianity today whose words have already been delivered on the master's voice. That month, that series of months, that is when God began to put his hand on a lot of stuff, which for me at the time was just amazing. So I've had this word that I'm now about to read since January, 2014. And only when I was writing this 2019 Canada prophecy, he told me, put it there at the bottom so that whoever Canadian reads it would see that just as Joshua said, there's God and there's the other gods. As for me and my house, we're going to serve God. If you guys want to go with the other, other gods, it's up to you, but I set before you life, life and death today. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. The Lord said, put up that word against Canada, for I will indeed destroy them with fire and plague. I will break down their economy and let the strength of it drain out slowly because of the slow torture in unrighteousness and sin they have done against me. They will live to see their kingdom fall and fail. I'm going to bring down Canada, bastion of peace and prosperity, known for safety and order. I, God, will throw you into chaos and disorder. I am going to break the back of the maple leaf and bring that nation to its needs. knees. This is the word of the Lord. And I wrote at the end, may this word inspire repentance and an immediate turning back to God in Canada. Amen. And so Canada, God is saying that you failed to heed the warning to shut your borders against the kind of compliance and filth that America exports on a second by second basis to anyone who has contact with her. And at this time, I will simply put here a piece from a prophecy about Russia, because this was quite a new revelation that God brought into the mix concerning Canada. And it was that Canada is going to work with Russia in the end times. So I think I just, I made a prophecy. I'm not sure if I've released it yet, but I did um, release in a prophecy that the Lord was showing me that in the end times, Russia and Ukraine will be here and China and Taiwan will be here. And these will be allies working together, basically kings of the East. And there would be a unified South Korea and North Korea coming also with them and Japan, who is right now a full time ally of the United States. And God also said that there are certain Western allies, people that America firmly counts on their support as part of the Western coalition of nations working together. And God said that even those people in their hearts are sick of obeying America's bullying ways and that when Russia rises to prominence and when Russia begins to bleed across Europe like an army that can't be stopped, that other Western countries are going to go along with Russia, maybe for compliance or maybe because they genuinely have a grudge. God has revealed that many of the Western powers 
that um, currently work with America now do not consider that relationship to be a working relationship. He said it's more of a commander in chief relationship where America gives commands and then the only role that the other countries can play is to comply with the commands because they have all seen what America is capable of doing to other countries that they tell everyone this is an enemy. Economy will be destroyed, trade will be destroyed, industry will be destroyed. Sometimes they come over and they actually destroy the country itself. And so nobody wants to be in that position. And so a lot of people in this NATO, um, God says they have deep resentment. And when America is at her weak point, they will see Russia's point and come along. And so I saw that when America was in her civil war or America was fighting Russia, there were freedom fighters, guerrilla fighters, sons of freedom. And when they were out in the mountain resisting for a while, they were tired and they tried to run into Canada through things that were called wilderness gaps. So a wilderness gap is like a little pass that they have in these mountains. I will not say which mountains because I surely don't know. Even though God said that the places Russia is hiding now, that they already have troops now, is in the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachians. So I'm not sure if those mountains are near Canada. But I saw that people who were resisting capture, people who were in the guerrilla forces, they tried to use these things called wilderness gaps to go into Canada. But Russia ran after them because one of the things that Russia will do when they come here is they will be exercising the absolute complete judgment of God. And I have said it in many prophecies, and I will continue to say that. God says when Russia comes here, every single act that Russia will do is something that America has done, either in her old past or here. Russia will come here and Russia will take slaves. And that is because America has taken slaves. Russia will come here and Russia will strip off the clothes of people. That is because America stripped off the American Indian's clothes. She stripped off the black people's clothes. And she went over to many foreign Middle East countries and stripped off a lot of clothes, male and female. And CNN conveniently forgot to report that part of what the boys were doing. God says that Americans should not marvel at the cruelty of the Russian and Chinese forces. And I can tell you that the Chinese are 10 times more brutal than the Russians, which is saying something. Said they should not marvel because the acts of these people, it is as if God has engraved it on their hearts. These young soldiers, especially the Chinese, they look like teen boys in the visions, hardly any old men. These children are so precise in their actions. It is as if these old sins of this country that these children cannot possibly know of will be written upon their hearts and they will come here and start doing things that only old U.S. veterans and old historians who know how brutal was this chattel slavery in this country. You will see these children performing these things as if they are on autopilot. And that is because God says that he is using them as his weapons of indignation. So I saw that people were running to Canada and Russia went into Canada and got people back. And Canada did not do anything to try and stop. Canada had been feeding these people in the mountains and were trying to help them in their resistance warfare. But when Russia started pursuing them, Canada didn't do anything and the Russians did not have any quarrel with the Canadians at all. So they weren't trying to hurt Canadian people or anything like that. They were just going after the American resistance to bring them back to America to serve the penalty of God. And let me take this opportunity to say to people, When you hear prophecy, you need to go to the Lord about it. When Lord says that he's going to lead people out of this country, he doesn't mean every single person. There are people upon whom judgment is sitting on your head. It may not be sitting on your head directly for you. It may be sitting because of your bloodline and things that your bloodline has done. And when the prophecy comes and you have an opportunity to repent, you say, what is this to do with me? Those people are dead. That judgment will flow as seamlessly as certain diseases flow through the bloodline to the children like that. God may take certain people out. He said he will definitely drive many migrants from here and he will do it by his sovereign will. 
He said that he will drive many Americans from here to preserve their life. So just this thing is like martyrdom, if I can say it. No martyr puts their hand up and say, yes, please, Lord, take my life. And at the same time, no man who is not a marcher can say, I'm, I'm ready to die for God. I'm you don't know if you are one of those un, upon who this statement rests and they shall seek for death and not find it. No man knows his ending. You cannot take any particular prophetic ending to yourself and say, I'd rather this and I'd rather that. I put a post on my community page today and one thing it says is that God is a sterling, seamless judge. No one shall be judged a measure more than he deserves, but no one shall be judged a measure less than he deserves. So the best thing that the discerning does is you seek God to find out, where do I fall in this? There are judgments of mercy. There are judgments of hiding away. There are judgments of being driven from the land. Come out from them, my people. There are some people who read that and they have the sense to know that come out from among them means don't wait for me to push you. Don't wait for the civil war to push you. Seek me, and if I say to you, it's time to pack up because you have four little children, you're one of those I want to leave early to Portugal or even just next door to Mexico, then you need God to start that process, not the celestial on the internet. I bring forth the prophecy. Then you listen and you go to the God of the prophecy. So I saw that Russia went after people into Canada, and I also saw that Canada allowed Russia to enter USA by her borders. So when Russia came here, um, the Canadian border is one of the places that they penetrated to. She agreed to let Russia cross her lands to surprise America. And God showed me that when this process was over, when the process of secret surprise invasion was over that Canada was very remorseful, very sorry. And that is why she began to help American f freedom fighters. That is why she began to let people cross her border for refuge. And she also began to try to militarize and help the U.S. resistance. But that, that particular aspect did not get very far because Russia was prepared for it. They followed people into Canada and they brought them back. And I've seen some people asking, um, will China help too? I've said many times that China is going to be the finger in finger ally of Russia in this. It is called the Russian Chinese invasion. If I say Russia is doing something, assume that President Xi is sending money, troops, and boys to support whatever it is these two nations are talking and laughing about now on their secret phone calls where God shows me that as things begin to go wrong here in this country, I saw these two men call each other, but they could not start the phone call because of laughing in the beginning. They wanted to do cheers. They wanted to do cheers, but they couldn't start the phone call for laughing at how well the winds of change at that time were favoring them. And so this is the word for Canada mixed in with greater understanding from other prophecies of how things will go. And I continue now today making the prophecies for the different nations. There are quite a few prophecy for the African nations, so I will begin working on those by the grace that God supplies. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. And until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.